Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to The George Myers Show, where our purpose here is to investigate, evaluate, and inform, bringing you the truth. Because as uncomfortable as it might seem from time to time, the truth is the thing that's going to set you free. Today I have with me a very interesting guest, someone who I've had on the show before, downtown businessman Dennis Navratil. Welcome, Dennis. Thank you, George. And today, and today we're going to talk about some, a very interesting topic, and that is economic development. Uh, we're all concerned about it, particularly in this day and age with high unemployment. And here in Racine, we're continuously losing population, see a lot of vacancies sitting around <laughs> in the way of commercial as well as residential uh, properties. Uh, Dennis, what is economic development? How, how do we define that? What, what are we looking at when we're talking about economic development? Well, yeah, I guess today we're going to focus on what we're trying to do here in Racine specifically. But I think what we're talking about, I mean, it's we want to create wealth. Right? We want to be wealthier so that people can, you know, pay for their mortgages and people have enough to eat and can send their kids to schools and that we can uh, pay for a functioning government. And those are all the kinds of things we need wealth for. So I think when the city is talking about economic development, we're talking about creating wealth. That sounds good. And I, and I might uh, transform that into maybe a concern about standard of living. Mm -hmm. In other words, when we talk about wealth, a lot of people immediately think of big houses and expensive vacations and things like that. We're not necessarily talking about that. We're talking about just a general standard of living. How well can we live? Can we find a job when we need one? Can we pay our rent, buy our food, get the clothing we need, education, that type of thing? All that is involved with this creation of wealth. And it, point out that if you go back far enough in this land here we call Racine, I mean, this was just fields at one point. And, and so it comes in, and how does this stuff get developed? How does it come about, right? And that, that, that's what sure. you're looking at. All yeah. right, so, mm -hmm. so, so, uh, so now we kind of defined it. The question is, is how does it come about? What happens to it? And we're eventually going to get down to how is the city <laughs> developing wealth, and is it, what type of job is it doing? But right now, let's get let's keep back to the very basic thing: how does wealth get developed? I think, George, um, regular people are creating wealth every single day. I think the best way to explain this is maybe with an example. Um, let's say I make some item that you need. Let's say a pair of shoes. Okay. Um, it costs me, say, $20 to make these shoes. After I've bought the materials, I've paid for the labor, the mortgage on my building, insurance, all these kinds of things. It costs me $20 to make a pair of shoes. Okay. You need shoes. It so happens you know how to make shoes, but you can only make them for $50 because you don't have the modern equipment that I have. Um, and so when you buy those shoes from me, instead, I made them for 20, I sell them to you for 25. We're both happy because I've, I've paid off my, my debt and I've got five extra dollars. You've got a pair of shoes that would have otherwise cost you $50 to make. We're both happy. That $5 difference is wealth. That's wealth. So regular free people every single day are creating wealth up and down the street. Um, I think that's exactly right. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you an example where I personally face that many, many years ago, we're going back uh, several decades, when I used to work on my car myself. Mm -hmm. Did all the stuff on myself, and I look at that sign up there in the, uh, at the, at the a mechanic shop, <clears throat> and at the time, $17 an hour was just an outrageous amount to spend. But I found out that despite the fact that he was making $17 an hour, if I did the same job, it would take me all day to do it, he'd finish it off in a couple hours, mm -hmm. so I was still ahead paying him that outrageous wage, mm -hmm. See, because he still did it for cheaper than I can do it, just like you said in your shoe example. So this really works in the private sector, and sure. I've faced that, those decisions before. And George, maybe you're better at something else than fixing cars, so that the time you wasted all day fixing your car, you could have been doing something else that you're good at and create wealth. Oh, I absolutely yeah. was. At the time, I was, I was fixing houses. I was doing remodeling. Sure. I, was, I was getting involved with real estate. Mm -hmm. So you know, that, that, was, that was the decision, is that I could do a lot better uh, with my day than make $34. So the key here, though, in this wealth creation is that you've got two or more people engaged in voluntary transactions. Right. Um, and when you get into, well, I don't know if we want to segue into what the city's uh, economic development approach tends to be. It, it's a little bit different. 
Right. Yeah, they, they work on a little different basis. But what, when we're looking at it uh, is when we see how wealth is created, we see it's because somebody gets out there and does something, makes a pair of shoes, fixes a car, does something like that, and that, that improves our standard of living. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you've now got something to put on your feet when you're going to work, and you have a way to get to work because the car runs. Mm -hmm. All right. And the other person who's provided the service has some money that he could he or she could spend you know, somewhere to, else. To rent an so apartment we're, for we're me. Cycling yeah. a lot of, right, we're cycling a lot of money <laughs> around, and, and wealth is being created. Exactly. All right, now, now you, you brought up the city. What, how, does it, how is the city operating when it's well, doing its economic development? And we might look at, uh, now, we, economic development is theoretically the same thing, whether the private sector is doing it or the, the public sector, the government's doing it, right? I mean, we're not going to change the definition for it. Right, right, right. All right. So how does how what happens when you when the government starts to work on this stuff? Well, it seems to me they've got a, a whole department, and it's a it's it seems to be a big focus of the mayor. We need economic development. We want jobs. So they've got this department, and they've got the mayor who who goes. You know, he's out there looking for. Um, I, it seems to me, just anecdotally from reading the papers and whatnot, he's looking for uh, companies that will come into Racine uh, and and develop their products. Um, that's one thing. They also seem to be getting in lately to a lot of um, buying property and, and fixing it up and then, and then selling it again. Um, those, unless I'm missing something, those seem to be the kind of focus of what we're doing here in Racine to uh, create economic development. Let's put it this way. Uh, what I've observed of the city, particularly in the area of economic, um, the um, city planning, and with regards to the way the city uh, manager is working, uh, Tom Friedel, is that they are definitely getting into the private sector and doing what is normally done in the private sector. All right, well, I, th I think we've seen that, right? And that, that's what you're talking about, particularly with real estate. Yes. And um, well, there's some other areas where they are, they are you know, getting involved in the private sector. But the main one right now is housing. That seems to be their favorite. Mm -hmm. And these TIF districts. Um, mm -hmm. Um, just so we don't go too far with this, how, before we, without explaining, what, how does a TIF district supposedly operate? How does that bring about economic development? May we ask that question? Uh, yeah, I think the, the theory on TIFs is that um, the... By the way, TIF stands for Tax Incremental Financing, right? Yes. Okay, go ahead. Um, so if there were, um, city would help maybe some project developer um, with some of the uh, expenses and that developer is going to create wealth theoretically by improving a property, and he he will he or she will usually get some kind of a tax break as an incentive to make that development happen, and the payoff uh, for the city's um, investment comes when all of that tax uh, is collected, and then they can start taxing it at the regular rate. I don't know if I have that exactly right. You may want to. Clean all up right. my little story there a little. All right, that's, yeah. that's fine. I'll tell you what I'd like to do right now because we're, we're getting more heavily into our topic for the day. I want to take a quick break here, uh, listen to a couple messages, and then we'll get back to the show. So I've got downtown businessman Dennis Navratil here with me today, and we're talking about wealth creation. We've seen how it works in the private sector. We use the example of the shoes, and I use the example of the car repair that I experienced, actually experienced. What is the city doing, and, and particularly in real estate? That seems to be their, their real attention is they want to get into real estate and create wealth, I guess. Isn't that what's, isn't that what's called economic development? Right. Isn't that what it's all about? That's so. the idea. Well, one of the, one of the key differences, George, in the examples of the shoes or the car repair, it was voluntary exchange of money for service. When the city gets involved, um, you could say that it's not really very voluntary because when the city buys a property, they're using someone else's money to make that purchase. And then they're using someone else's money to fix that property. So you really have a different dynamic, um, and it's, it's questionable whether that's the way to actually develop wealth, to create wealth. Um, and and uh, I just think that when you start using someone else's money, 
you're, the, you really do change the incentives of how people behave. Um, for example, if I, I own a business, George, if I were able to um, access your wallet against your will and, and, and extract some money there, I might do some, some very different things with my business. I might take greater risks. I might, um, because if, if those risks work out, I make a lot of money. If they don't work out so well, well, sorry, George, but you've, you've <laughs> lost your money. Um, I, might, um, I might take uh, some business trips to the Bahamas in January um, with your money. Uh, there, there's things that I'm going to do that, whether they're right or wrong, you, the question really is, is it going to help create wealth or is it going to be wasteful? And I think once you start using other people's money, you really increase the risk of waste because you people don't like to lose their own money. I'd much prefer to lose someone else's. I think I think you, what you do is you take it from the realm of probability, which is how the, the businessman works, and you, you you shift it over a little bit into possibilities, which is where the government can go ahead and take risks because there's always somebody else's money there, mm -hmm. particularly the taxpayers. And I'm not going to get into too much other than just mentioning it. How, how the government starts to look at taxpayers as kind of their colony of ants. They're out there doing all this work, 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 and, and we herd, 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 herd them, we control them. But we don't really consider them as people and having their own desires and their own goals and their, their own uh, personal freedom with what they want to do with their life. We're, we're telling them how they have to live their life, how they have to run their business, how they have to keep their house, how they have to uh, go to work in the morning. So, so um, Yes, I, I think it definitely shifts when you start working with somebody else's money, which is the point that you're, you're bringing out. And so what happens over in this, in this uh, housing thing? How does, how does that work uh, between what a private sector is doing versus what the planning department and the public sector is doing? Oh, there's a lot of differences. For, for starters, there's the whole um, infrastructure cost of this department. I mean, there's, I don't know how many people are, are there, but we're, we're paying a lot of money for these developers. Um, and over just the, de the just Department of Economic Development, we, we were paying money, absolutely. taxpayers' money, mm -hmm. and they aren't necessarily earning their own way at this point. Mm -hmm. but they're, they're getting paid because we feel somebody's decided that we need them, which is always a good, good uh, that's always a good selling point, you know, with the government. Uh, you need us, so give us money. Um, and so, but, that, but that's the first thing, as you're saying, is there's, there's a department there, there's people drawing wages, and... So They're those existing. those are all upfront costs that are quite right. expensive, um, which which you wouldn't have in in private transactions. So right off the bat, they're spending a lot of money, which means that there's less likely to create wealth, um, coupled with them using someone else's money and the um, the risks that that entails and the waste that usually happens. People are far more likely to look after their own money. George, you don't want to lose your house. I'm pretty sure of that. So you're going to work. You're not going to waste that money that you're, right. you're investing. Um, you, you might get a little lax when you're borrowing or using somebody else's money. So I think these are just, it doesn't mean that the people at the city are, are bad people or anything like that. It's just that they're not going to have the same investment in the success. You know, you bring up a real good point there. The, the, um what we often look at when we look at this housing is what do they buy it for, what do they put into it, and what do they sell it for? Mm -hmm. You look at that and you say, well, you know, when it came out, well, they got most of the money back or whatever, and so now they can go and do it again. But on top of all that is this expense of the people doing that, that whole department. That's sure. not included in that formula. Yeah. Whereas when we're in the private sector, that has to be included in the formula. Sure. So we've so we've already found one area where they work at, at totally different than, than the way the private sector does, simply because they can, yeah. because because they've sold the public on this idea. We need economic development. We don't have this this scattered uh, what do they what do they call it? Um, where you just you just grow at uh, I forgot what they call it. Um, but anyway, it's it's where the the the. Um, the, the, the economy and the, and the city and whatever ever develops just on its own. Hmm. And there's not a plan thing where you have all the, you know, the zoning and all oh, this yeah. type of stuff. So, um, it, and, we've, and we've been sold on the idea that we need that, and these are the people who are gonna provide it for us. Mm -hmm. And so pay, give yeah. us money. And the question is, does it work? Is their approach working better than my example of making shoes that you're willing to buy? Um, and my suggestion is that it, 
nine times out of ten, it's not going to work. All right, let's, and, uh, let's, it, uh, let's take a little break it, here, and then we're going to come up with that. That's a real good question. Does it work? So now we're going to get into the issue of does this economic development per the way the city operates it, does it work? And Dennis, how do we measure that? How do we determine whether it works or not? Well, remember what we're talking about. We're talking about wealth creation, economic development. So when you, if you're going to create wealth, you're going to cover your costs and then some. That, and then some is the wealth. Okay. So we've got, what are the costs? The city has hired a lot of employees who work year round in economic development. Right. And then they buy a property. There's another cost. And then they rehab that property. There's right. another cost. Let's say that all comes to $100,000. They need to sell that building for one hundred and twenty, and then you've got 20000 in profit. Uh, wealth. But I don't think that ever happens, quite frankly. I know numerous examples where this isn't even counting the cost of the city employees. They buy a property for 50000 they rehab it for 150000 and then they sell it to somebody for 50000 So there's a $100,000 loss there. George, that's not economic development. That's economic failure, and there's consequences to that. In the private sector, there, that would definitely be ec economic failure, and you would find the people engaged in that finding another job. They'd be going doing something else. Absolutely. Unfortunately, the way the government works, you don't eliminate jobs. If, if anything, you put more people on it to try and make it work. So you, you start building up the bureaucracy, but the but the point is, is that, is that there is no economic. I mean, there there is no economic development in your in your example. And what would be the outcome if we continue to operate that way? Well, George, I mean, if you if you continuously lose money, where do you get that money from? You have to tax. You have the only way that the government gets the money is through taxes. So they got to keep getting money out of the private sector. In other words, that's going to make it more difficult for me to produce shoes that you want to buy, right? Right? Because instead of costing twenty dollars to make that shoe, now it's going to cost twenty-five. And you, because your taxes went uh, up. My taxes went up, my and you you don't have as much money to spend. So you're it's make it more difficult for you to buy that shoe from me. So maybe I have to I make less shoes. So you're losing on both ends. The, the government is wasting a lot of money, and that's creating a, a, a problem for the private sector because they have less money. They have to continue to feed these failures at the government level. Um, it's it's lose lose. And 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 the thing I think that you eventually see, which is what we're seeing in Racine, you're going to see suddenly because businesses can't operate because because our trade drops down, uh, unemployment, because somebody's out of work now. Sure. Uh, you're going to see people have to leave the city. They have to move to an area, a climate mm -hmm. where the economics is is, be, is better. It's it's more conducive right. to business conducting business. And uh, what have we been experiencing, Racine? Now it seems like last I heard, we have the highest unemployment in the state, or close to it. We've, We've gone from 95, nine, over uh, ninety five thousand people down to less than eighty thousand. We're down to seventy nine thousand people. You're, you're seeing. I mean, uh, maybe maybe, maybe it, we're, we're we're reaping the fruits of this economic development, so-called, that, uh, that, that city style, tax, uh, sure. government you're, style. You're, you're seeing failure up and down all around the city with the vacancies, people fleeing the city, all the things that you mentioned. Um, you know, that's economic development in reverse. It's failing. And the question is, in the private sector, you're held accountable for that. The city just, same people doing the same thing year after year. At what point do we need to make a change? I think that's a real good question, and I think that's a, a very excellent point for the next segment. Let's, let's take a quick break here, and then we're going to talk about, it's fine to look at the problem. What are we going to do about it? So we've talked about the problem. Now, let's look at the solution. What are we going to do? We cannot just sit here and continue to take this. And I know there's people interested in changing this, a lot more than people than just you and I, Dennis. 
What do you see as some of the steps we need to take to, to get out of this rat race of taking money out of the private sector, putting it into the public sector, and actually wasting it? And, and seeing the results of loss of population, higher vacancy rates, smaller number of stores, uh, the, the, the failure of, of the economy to develop any, any, any creation of wealth. That's a, you know, that's a really difficult question. But I mean, I think the city really should first ask themselves, is what they're doing working? I think we've discussed it. We don't think it is. We right. think it's failing. Um, the, the, the evidence suggests that it's failing. Um, so what should the city be doing? Um, we talked about uh, private transactions and, that, and the wealth that's generated that way. The city should be, and government generally, should be trying to facilitate free people engaging in transactions that generate wealth. Um, you know, so there is a role for government. Um, you know, the government needs to, you know, for example, if let's get, we've been using the shoe example. Let's say I sold you some shoes and I, I claimed they were leather. It turns out that they were, you know, plastic or something, and they fell apart in a couple days. The city can step in and say, I, I violated your uh, contract with you, and, and that there's courts that can sort of help solve some uh, disagreements between us. Or, you know, if there's somebody who wants to break in and steal my, all the shoes in my uh, warehouse, the police are there to, to, to help, you know, to, they're there to help facilitate those free transactions. Between That's kind people. of the old concept that we have heard talked about in the past and a little bit in the future, uh, in the present, <clears throat> and that is the government's role is actually more that of a referee. Mm -hmm. as opposed to being one of the players in the game. Right. Right now, you, you, when it comes to housing, this is something we failed, forgot to mention, but when it gets to housing, you know, there are other people in the housing business. You're one of them. Mm -hmm. So you've got a situation where George Myers is trying to make a living by, you know, managing and fixing houses. City is trying to make, create wealth by m managing and fixing houses. Uh, the only thing is they've got a little advantage over you, George. They've got access to other people's money. And, and they so, can do it so at a loss. They can do it at a loss. <laughs> so they're competing against you. This is a disincentive for you, George. This is an, this is, they're almost saying, George, why don't you just get out of town? We'll handle the housing stuff. Um, and this is why some people are leaving town. They're competing against their, their own government. I mean, that's... I think there's some people in government who really like that. They'd like to see me leave town. And <laughs> 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 no, seriously, though, that, that, that is, uh, that, that is their, their feeling. And I, and I see it when I talk to people in the city hall. They, they, they've become very possessive of this little thing they got going, particularly with housing. And they don't necessarily even want us looking into it mm -hmm. because uh, they'd rather, like the private sector, just, it's just none of your business, what, mm -hmm. we're, what we're doing. We're, we're here making money. We're creating wealth. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, we can see that they aren't. That still gets us back. Well, what do what do we do about it? Do we do we just we get them out of it? Is that what you're saying? Well, I think I think yeah, they, they should largely probably just shut that department down. Um, but um, beyond that, now they that's should, an interesting thought. How you shut the, shut the Department of Economic Development down? You be talking about if they're losing money and their job is to earn money? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. That, that, there's there's a, there's something we could, might have to consider. That is what yeah. you're saying. Is is yeah. just. To heck with that department. It's, it's, a, it's shown to be a total failure. It, it, it's got a 40-year track history of failure. Uh, maybe it's time that we ended it. There's a lot of communities that don't have economic development departments in, in just in and around Racine. It's, so, that's interesting because yeah. we're, the only, we're the only town that isn't growing, by the way. Every, every, every other municipality within the county of Racine has grown in population, including, including the the county itself, so which means these others are offsetting the loss that, that Racine has. So, all right, so go ahead. All right, so that's, that's, that's one thing we could do. Well, I mean, the other, other things, George, I mean, they, you know, when, uh, when the mayor is out looking for um, businesses to bring into Racine, inevitably those businesses are going to, they're going to have their hand out asking for money in the form of uh, tax breaks or uh, maybe they'll get a building uh, to put their business in for, you know, less than the market rate or subsidizing these businesses that we're trying to, to bring in. Um, meanwhile, the businesses that are already here, um, they really have to make up the slack for the gifts we're giving to these other, other businesses that we're trying to lure in here. I don't think we've lured too many, if, if any, so maybe we're better off with not having those businesses come and, and working with what we have here. Um, it would seem to me like the best way to lure businesses in here would be to reduce the taxes 
and the regulations. Make just make it easier to operate. And to demon that demonstrate that 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 Racine is supporting private wealth creation, a free market of, type of, of approach to, to instead it. Instead of competing against it and defeating it, um, which is we're seeing signs of that in, in the city of of, of of people giving up, you know, they've, uh, vacant buildings and whatnot. People leaving. You know, there, there's an old, old, goes back to Eisenhower, uh, uh, policy set by the federal government. And that it was called the Eisenhower Policy and the, uh, f the, the FAIR Act. Uh, the idea was the government should not compete with its citizens. Sure. You know? Yeah, and I'm, I'm, I'm quoting out of, the, out of the 1955 policy. The competitive enterprise system characterized by individual freedom and initiative Imagine hearing words like that out of the federal government. Is the primary source of national economic strength. In recognition of this principle, it has been, it been and will continue to be the general policy of the government to rely on commercial sources to supply products and services the government needs. The federal government should rely on commercially available sources to provide commercial products and services. The government shall not carry, start or carry on any activity to provide a commercial product or service if the product or service can be procured more economically from a commercial source. That's terrific. That George. sounds pretty really good, doesn't it? <laughs> that's, that's, not, that's not what's been happening. Um, but as a policy, doesn't, doesn't that seem to make sense? It's a good idea. It's a good idea not to compete with, um, with your own citizens. Um, I, I, instead, what they could do is, well, for example, they're, they're, they're wanting to offer these incentives to out-of-town businesses. Um, what ends up happening is they, they pick and choose a few uh, big projects that they get behind. Instead, they could lower the costs for the businesses that are already here. Um, there's there are some examples of that in a way already. There's some a program. We got about 30 seconds. Take it over, George. No, no. <laughs> no, I, can't, go ahead, finish, I, I can't finish in 30 uh, seconds. All right, all right. Well, th we'll have <laughs> to have okay. you back then, Dennis, right, to finish that to finish that thought. Perfect. But at any rate, uh, hope you enjoyed the show, folks. Uh, this is an important subject to many of us here in Racine, as well as uh, other parts of the state and the country. So, in the meantime, stay tuned, and we'll talk to you again. Thank you.